beginning with this edition of the free software series and future episodes to come, we'll take a look at the best free and open source programs for your computer. In short, when you see the term open source software, it means that its source code is freely available for users to inspect, modify, and distribute the software to anyone for any reason. With so many free and open source programs that are actually great, coming up, I will show you 10 of our personal favorites, many of which you've heard me discuss previously in other videos. They're all well-established, trusted, and completely free. Let's get started. First up is LibreOffice. This Office suite, released in 2011, is a great alternative to Microsoft Office. Their Microsoft Word and Excel alternatives have improved quite a bit over the years when opening and converting those file formats. Included with LibreOffice is Writer, which has many of the same features as Microsoft Word. Calc is similar to Excel. Impress can be used instead of PowerPoint. Draw is a vector graphics editor and math can be used to create and edit mathematical formulas. LibreOffice is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. There are two versions available for download. There's one for early adopters that want the latest features, and their other one is their stable release with less bugs. Developed by the Mozilla Foundation way back in 2002, the open source Firefox browser is still one of the most popular browsers available. It has a ton of add-ons and extensions that enhance your browsing experience. You can sync between your desktop and mobile devices and includes an excellent manager for bookmarks. Other browsers that use variants of the Firefox source code include Waterfox and the privacy and security focused Tor browser. The Firefox web browser is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. On various distributions of Linux, Firefox is often the default web browser. Next up is OBS Studio. Released in 2012, the screen recorder is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. It's very popular for streaming video games and other live content. Recordings can also be saved to your computer to be imported into your favorite video editor. If you have an older PC with low system specs, you may encounter lag. For most people, the only true fix for this is to upgrade your computer. Many users of OBS Studio report that they find it to be confusing to use. When starting out, I'd highly recommend checking out the various tutorials available online. Shotcut is a great video editor for new users. It was initially released in 2004 and is updated on a regular basis. A few years ago, it was the first editor I used for editing YouTube videos before switching over to Premiere Pro. It includes a ton of features that are often locked behind a paywall with most free video editors including support for 4K resolutions and allows for multiple tracks on the same timeline. If you've tried out other video editors, Shotcut's user interface may not be what you're used to. For example, when adding tracks to the timeline, you have to click on the menu icon in the lower left, then select add video track and go back in and add audio track before adding your clips. On the Shotcut website, they include video tutorials that will teach you how to use it. Shotcut is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. The oldest program in this video is GIMP. Released in 1996, this image editor is one of the best free alternatives to Photoshop. Before we go any further, many of the free and open source programs offered depend on the donations of others for development. If you'd like to donate to any project, you'll often see a donate button near the top of their website. With GIMP, it's to the right of tutorials. Let's move on. GIMP supports layers and includes tools for retouching your photos or creating brand new images from scratch. In the past year, GIMP has received a major upgrade making it more useful, including cosmetic changes that make it look better. I personally prefer the dark theme, but if you don't, here's how you change the theme. Go to Edit and select Preferences. Go down to the Interface section and select Theme. Your choices are dark, which is what I'm using right now, gray, light, and system, which is way too bright. If you want to check out GIMP, it's available for download on Linux, Mac, and Windows. ShareX is one of the best screenshot utilities ever to be created. It was initially released in 2007, and at this time is only available for computers running Windows 7 or newer. 
With so many features and ways to capture any portion of your screen, it makes the new screenshot tool in the latest version of Windows 10 look pathetic. It's quite simple to use. Just go to Capture in the left pane and select your screenshot method. For simple tasks, you can even use ShareX to record your screen. Otherwise, you're better off using OBS Studio. If you select Web Page Capture, it works great to capture an entire web page. At the top, just enter the URL of the web page you'd like to capture. In this example, I'll just use the ShareX website. Click on Capture. When it's done, click Upload. With every screen capture method, at the top, you have various ways to save, upload, and mark up your images. Blender is a 3D computer graphics toolset released in 1998. It's been used to create animated films, video games, visual effects, and a whole lot more. Some of its features include 3D modeling, raster graphics editing, rigging and skinning, and even includes a video editor. Blender does have a high learning curve, and the user interface will be overwhelming for first-time users. So I'd recommend checking out the various tutorials on the Blender website when you're getting started using it. Blender is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. If you're a programmer, Atom is a source code editor with support for plugins written in Node.js and embedded Git control. Released in 2014, it's available for Windows, Linux, and Mac with thousands of themes and open source packages to choose from to change the look and feel of Atom. It includes developer tools, and with its user-friendly layout, it's really easy to use, especially when analyzing code. It's a definite step up from the standard notepad, and unlike most of its competitors, it's truly open source. The VLC Media Player has been around since 2001 and will play just about any audio or video file format. It's available on all major platforms, including apps for both Android and iOS. Its user interface has been described by many people as being clunky when compared to other media players, but at least it's ad-free, has no spyware, and just works great once you get used to it. VirtualBox, released in 2007, allows you to create and manage guest virtual machines running other operating systems on your computer. Setup can be confusing for new users. That's why I created a beginner's guide on this channel using the Linux distro Ubuntu as an example. You can install other operating systems using the same steps. Just adjust the memory and CPU as needed. If you experience any issues, especially on older PCs, you may need to go into your BIOS and enable virtualization. VirtualBox is available for download on Windows, Linux, and Mac. Thanks for watching. All links are in the description. If this video is useful for you, give it a thumbs up and share with others. What is your favorite free and open source software? Let us know about it in the comments. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and click the bell icon to stay up to date with the latest free software and other tech-related stuff from TechGumbo.